very dear devotee from the Iskandanesia Yatra. Her name is um, Kalindi Devi Dasi, and she's been an incredible influence on my spiritual life. Um, she was in a terrible accident yesterday, and she's in a very serious condition. So um, I'd like all the devotees to please uh, pray to Lord Nusimadev on her behalf, um, and uh, hope that she will have um, a quick recovery and resume her wonderful services to Shri Shantagala and Hari Vidya. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pesaya Bhutale Shumate Bhati Vedanta Swami Nitti Nane Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pesaya Thank you. 
So, um, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak today on such an important topic. And I pray for all your blessings in order to do justice to this class. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is. Chapter 9, um, text 29. Samaham sarva bhuteshu name dvishyo sinapiyaha ye bhajanti tummam bhaktiya mai te te shuchapiyaham. The translation I envy no one, nor am I partial to anyone. I am equal to all. But whoever renders service unto me in devotion is a friend, is in me, and I am also a friend to him. But what by his blind glacier is he puffed with unto the Sonishu Talbad, the Talbad, he replied. One may question here that if Krishna is equal to everyone and no one is his special friend, then why does he take a special interest in the devotees who are always engaged in his transcendental service? But this is not discrimination. It's natural. Any man in this material world may be very charitably disposed, yet he has a special interest in his own children. The Lord claims that every living entity in whatever form is his son. And so he provides everyone with a generous supply of the necessities of life. He is just like a cloud which pours rain all over, regardless of whether it falls on rock or land or water. But for his devotees, he gives special attention, specific attention. Such devotees are mentioned here. They are always in Krishna consciousness, and therefore they are always transcendentally situated in Krishna. The very phrase Krishna consciousness suggests that those who are in such consciousness are living transcendentalists situated in him. The Lord says here distinctly, Maite, they are in me. Naturally, as a result, the Lord is also in them. This is reciprocal. This also explains the words, Ye yatamam, Whoever surrenders unto me, proportionately, I take care of him. This transcendental reciprocation exists because both the Lord and the devotees are conscious. The Lord and the living entity um, eternally return. When the living entity becomes inclined to the service of the Lord, he looks like gold. The Lord is a diamond, and so this combination is very nice. Om again at the Mirandless Yagan and Janashala Kaya, Chakshurun Nidam Yenan, Plasma Shri, Kuruvin, Shishetan Yaman of Vishtan, Sapitan Yen of Rutale, Slam Pagan, Yam, the Dakis of the Dantitam, the Ma own Vishna Padaya, Krishna Kristaya Bhutale. Shrimati Bhakti Vidanta Swami Niti Naumine Namaste Saraswati Deve Guravani Pacharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashatya Deshitarine So this verse um, is explaining how Krishna is the eternal friend of all. In Bhagavad Gita he says that Aham Bija Pita Since he is the father of everyone, certainly he is everybody's friend and well-wisher. But there may be a certain um, doubt that arises in people's minds that he shows a special kind of favor to these devotees. 
and uh, a certain disfavor to um, those who are not his devotees, particularly those who are demonic. So in order to address this doubt, um, Srila Shukadev Goswami says in the Bhagavatam, that it is not Krishna directly who is dispensing these results uh, to the demons. He says that um, it's actually the time factor, which is, um, although created by Krishna and therefore definitely under his control, but the time factor is um, deciding the way that uh, people get rewarded. And those who are in Satvagun are rewarded by the time factor, and those who are in Tamagun are punished. So since uh, the devotees and the demigods are situated in Tatpagun, they appear to be favored because they are being favored by time, which is um, the independent factor of justice. Everybody reaps what they sow according to uh, their past karmas. And uh, since the demoniac, for those who are not devotees, are generally situated in Tamagun, the time factor um, will render punishment to them. He also explains that the reason we regard people as friends or enemies, and therefore we regard um, our behavior towards them is different. Um, we're generally favorable towards our friends and uh, not so favorable towards those who are unkind to us. This is because we are influenced by the three modes of material nature. Thus, the three modes are conditioning us to think of people as friends or enemies. Krishna, however, says in Bhagavad Gita many times that he is above the modes and never affected by them. Therefore, he's also not affected um, by the feelings of treating people as friends or as uh, enemies. And so he's never partial in that sense either. So. Um, if we look though carefully at Shri Prabhupada's purport, he says that it is natural that a father would be a more affectionate to children who are obedient to him. This is um, again a special favor of the Lord. Not only does it encourage the good children or the devotees to continue their, be their good behavior, but it also shows the other children, the, the children who are not um, regarding the Lord's instruction seriously and, and those we may consider in the demoniac category, that you know, if you are also following my command and my instructions, then you will also be rewarded as the devotees are. So this is a natural thing we can understand even if we see um, the behavior of father to children. And it's not something that is reflective of Krishna's impartiality. Um, not only is it understandable um, in the sense of the analogy we discussed, but also the relationship between the Lord and his devotees is completely transcendental. Because it's not existing in any way in this world, because devotional service, the Lord and the spirit soul are all um, completely transcendental and all linked together through that devotional service. So um, their relationship and that uh, reciprocal love that they have for each other, the Lord and his devotees, is not subject to anybody's judgment. So Sri Prabhupada clarifies that also. However, if we look very closely at the Lord's pastimes, and that's the focus of our discussion today, whether he is fighting with Hiranyaksha um, killing Hiranya Kashipur, blessing Prahlad Maharaj, or um, taking everything away from Bali Maharaj, like um, our advert showed, he's still showing a special favor, even to those who are um, considered demonic or not his devotees. And that's going to be our discussion. So, Sri Prabhupada says in the purport that um, Lord Krishna has said in Bhagavad Gita, as they surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. So, the Lord is making it abundantly clear that we need to actually show him that we are intending on um, rendering service to him with an aim to please him, whatever way he chooses to reward us or not. And that is how we establish that relationship of love. With him. We're not looking for anything in particular in exchange because that is what love is. However, if somebody still has a material desire and they're not going to be able to fully surrender unto Krishna, the Lord understands that. And that is the reason why those that are not rendering service to him are not going to attain him. The Lord is actually saying, I understand if you have these desires. So you finish them, you explore those desires, and then you come to me. So the Lord is not being fair and un unfair to people who are not following his path and his instructions. He's simply understanding the, our desire within our hearts, since he's always sitting there as a super soul, to continue enjoying material nature. And as such, if you are enjoying material nature, then it's not possible to attain Krishna. Um, this is explained in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Um, that Maya is light, uh, darkness, and Krishna is light. Krishna, Surya, Sama, Maya, Haya, Andhakara. Yahan, Krishna, Tahan, Naihi, Mayara, Adhikara. And that means that when there's light, there's no darkness. And when there's darkness, there's no light. So there's no option to have even a little bit of Maya. We have to have all of Krishna in order to attain Krishna. 
So um, that is why Krishna says that if we are surrendered to him fully, then we will attain him. Um, there's no doubt about that. Now, this material world is that kind of time out one, like we give to children sometimes. So just get all that energy out, get all those desires out, so that we can understand that these desires are actually taking us nowhere but into misery. And so we can try and get back to Krishna. And that's why it's said in this in Sri Shapanishad that this world is actually complete. Um, Om Purnam Adaha Purnam Idam Purna Purnam Adachate Purnasya Purnam Adaya Purnam Eva Pashishate. That means that the facilities to attain Krishna are also complete. This material world has been designed in that way. So it can be a nice place. I know it's a bit uh, unusual for anyone to say that, but it's nice when Krishna's here, um, like he was 5,000 years ago when the devotees are serving him purely. It was nice when Sri Prabhupada is here and he was spreading Krishna consciousness. It's nice wherever we are serving Krishna sincerely, because in that case, it's not the material world anymore. It's actually the spiritual world. And then we are fulfilling the real purpose of what the material world was created for. It's only when we try to enjoy it, when we allow that little bit of Maya in, that we are um, using the material world for the wrong purpose. And that is when we suffer. So that is what Maya is here for. She's here to sort through us, to sort out those who still have desires and those who really want Krishna. And she actually helps those who want Krishna to get further, closer to him. And um, for everyone else, you know, there's going to be material misery. So we have to decide which side we're going to be on and be sincere to that. So that is how we show Krishna our love, by being sincere on that path to attain him. And um, that's, love is not something that you, you need uh, you know, to be coached on, but we get so much of teaching in all our literatures and our classes and the feelings that we also get within our heart for Krishna's service spontaneously. So we, we do understand on some level that this, is, this love is so necessary to develop a relationship. Um, and we are developing that relationship with Krishna because he is a person. Sri Prabhupada had explained further on in the purport that love is only possible between persons. And that's why those that regard Krishna um, as impersonal, as a light with no personality, they're going to find it very difficult to um, develop that love for him. And without that love, we can't attain him and get out of this material world permanently. So Prahlad Maharaj says in the Bhagavatam, Oh my worshipful Lord, because the seed of lusty desires, which is the root cause of material existence, is within the core of everyone's heart, you have sent me to this material world to exhibit the symptoms of a pure devotee. So we also learn from these uh, wonderful examples like Prahlad Maharaj and how to become a pure devotee. He was always liberated. Um, sometimes when we hear the story of his um, appearance, um, we may think that he only became a devotee when Narada Muni instructed him, um, instructed his mother, and he was within the womb and he heard that instruction. But even when Narada Muni came to save him from the demigods who uh, were taking his pregnant mother away to try to kill him before he was born, because they assumed he was a demon, Narada Muni already told them at that stage, even before he had given Prahlad Maharaj any instruction, that um, this child is already a pure devotee. So these pure devotees have an opportunity, um, sorry, these pure devotees come to give us the opportunity to learn from them um, on how to achieve the favor of the Lord like they have. And um, uh, since we're discussing friendship today, we know that they are friends of Krishna that are able to do extraordinary things because of that deep relationship of love. Um, Arjuna explains in the Bhagavad Gita that he had such a close relationship with Krishna um, that they would sit together, they would eat together, they would relax together, they would lie on the same bed together. And he was even constantly joking with the Lord. Um, he apologizes so much for this because um, he realizes that uh, some of his jokes were sometimes, what we may say, taken a bit too far because he was of a superior royal family. So when he would address Krishna as Oyadava, he was indirectly saying, you know, you know your place, you're a bit, uh, you know, lower than us in the social standing. So he's apologizing profusely, but the Lord, he loves those reciprocations with his devotees. He wants to give us that opportunity. He wants us to follow in the footsteps of great devotees like Prahlad Maharaj so that we can attain to those relationships where we get to um, relate with him on a, on a friendly level that we would never have expected we could with God. Even the Calvert boys, which are the other great examples of friendship that are mentioned uh, in the Srimad Bhagavatam, um, they climb on Krishna's shoulders. Uh, he carries them when he loses a fight to them. He's a supreme lord, but he loses fights. Um, and uh, and they sometimes consider him weaker than, uh, for example, Sridham, who is considered stronger by the cowherd boys. And um, and they joke with him as well, and they steal his lunch. And also, 
um, engage in such amazing pastimes. And that is the opportunity that we could have when we make friendship with Krishna um, by engaging in devotional service. So we get this understanding and this, this information, um, not only from hearing from the scriptures, but also Krishna gives us that opportunity um, when he comes to this planet and he demonstrates his pastimes. There's evidences all over um, the, the holy places that he was there and he had these pastimes, that they're real, that you can become his friend, you can do these things. But the amazing thing is that people, you know, they're less inclined to believe that and more inclined to just imagine God as this personality, this or this person, this benefactor in the sky with no personality, or worse, to see him as a light that's just giving us everything. And it's it's very I would find that a lot more hard to believe than to believe that I could love God and get to climb on his shoulders in love, in a relationship of pure love. So, you know, for our minds, we need to convince ourselves that um the reality that Krishna is displaying to us um, when he comes and he shows us these wonderful pastimes and his, his, his interaction with devotees, that is the real reality. And his promises when he tells us to just abandon everything else and surrender unto him, we're going to be able to attain that highest destination of that great friendship with him. So that's, an, that's one way, but may, the Lord also shows his friendship to us in many other ways. Although we turn away from him when we are in this material world, um, even when he's not in front of our vision, he's still showing us his extraordinary friendship by everything that he grants to us. Um, he doesn't have to leave us here in perpetual darkness because um, Maya is darkness, as we said, and this material world is naturally dark. Um, but Krishna is supplying the light. Um, as he says, he's the light of the sun and the moon. He's giving us strength. He says he's the strength of the strong. He's giving us, um, uh, when he says that he's the moon that supplies the juice of vegetables, he's giving us those vegetables, the taste of water that wonderful quenching taste. He's in everything wonderful and auspicious that we are utilizing in this life. And he's giving all of these facilities to us so we can be grateful to him, use them in his service, and thus become purified and be able to attain him. He's also seated within us as a spirit soul. Even when we turn away from him, he doesn't leave any one of us alone for a single moment. He comes into this world, he follows us, and he waits for us to turn to him so that we can get that comfort of knowing that he's there, so that we're not alone in any situation. Many people often speak of that voice within that guided them in some kind of situation. That voice is Krishna. Krishna is always speaking to us, but we just don't have that ability to, to hear because we're, we're drowned out by all the noises. But he's drowned out by all the noises from the outside world when we are so busy with, with things that are not related to him. So then we may consider, so what about when there's not enough sunshine and not enough rain and disasters and disease and tragedies? Is Krishna not our friend then? Now we have to consider in that circumstance that we have spent many lifetimes denying him, denying Krishna's existence, denying our services to him. And without some lessons, we are never going to be able to understand that this world is a bad place and we need to go back to Krishna. He is again displaying his love for us and giving us these lessons because without it, there would be absolutely no impetus for us to reach him. It's only when we come across a difficult situation that we will turn to that eternal friend and ask him for help. That is our nature. That is unfortunately how um, we, we generally are in the material world. So sometimes we need harder lessons than other times in order for us to acknowledge him. And we just must follow in the examples again of great difficulties like Parad Maharaj and Bali Maharaj. Um, who says in relation to his own um, test from Krishna, only by providence have I been forcibly brought under your lotus feet and deprived of all my opulence. Because of the illusion created by temporary opulence, people in general who live under material conditions facing accidental death at every moment do not understand that this life is temporary. Only by providence have I been saved from that condition. So he is displaying that correct attitude for suffering. He's losing everything, but he's telling Krishna, thank you. Because without that, I would never have been snapped out of that illusion that everybody is in. Now, when you consider it, when Krishna saved Bali Maharaj from his um, downfall by his pride, he was also saving the whole world because Bali Maharaj, unfortunately, was associated with demons and Dhanavas. So even though he was a devotee, um, these demons would have taken advantage of that situation to overrun the planet and cause a lot of difficulty for those who were engaged in spiritual life. So as we said, this material world has been created for our spiritual life. It's been created for um, our spiritual advancement. And if we have um, only these demoniac influences, then we're not going to find the engagement in spiritual life to be um, 
very easy or that environment is not going to be conducive. So even in these days, we understand that there's a lot of that um, difficult situations. And so we have been given the holy name, which is Krishna himself. And that holy name by resounding all across the world um, is our only hope and our only um, panacea for whatever sufferings we're in. Um, His Holiness in Jaduna Swami Maharaj often says that Sri Prabhupada gave one translation of um, the Ma Mantra to be, my friend, my friend, my friend. And um, definitely when we're going through all these difficulties and we're chanting the holy name to meditate on calling Krishna, the very dearest friend to us, will certainly bring him into um, our consciousness and into this um, whatever situation of difficulty we may be in to save us from it. Um, imagine the whole world resounding with that cry of hope to Krishna. When Arjuna speaks in Bhagavad Gita in the 11th chapter, he says, Sane Rishikesha Tavapakirtya Jagat Rishyaki Anurajitecha Raksham Sikhi Tani Hishudravanti Sarve Namasyanti Cha Sitha Sangaha. Um, Arjuna said, O master of the senses, the world becomes joyful upon hearing your name, and thus everyone becomes attached to you. Although the perfected beings offer you their respectful homage, the demons are afraid and they flee here and there. All this is rightly done. With the chanting of Krishna's holy names, all kinds of joyous conditions can be um, the nature of this material world once again, so that we can engage in devotional service very conducively and favorably um, to attain Krishna at the end of these lives. Now, although this verse speaks about demons fleeing, there are demons like um, like Bali Maharaj who are not going to flee. There are people who are coming from unfavorable circumstances that will take to Krishna consciousness, that will take to the chanting and will realize um, the importance of serving the Lord. And that is why um, we are encouraged by Shri Prabhupada, while Lord Nishananda reached out to those who were acting demonic even um, when he was on this planet like Jagaka and Madai, to show us that the value of preaching is so inestimable, inestimable in this age. Um, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, we all know about being a preacher, that there is no one in the world who is more dear to him than such a preacher, nor will there ever be someone who is more dear. Because that person is reaching out to all these suffering souls to try to bring them back to Krishna. Krishna doesn't consider anyone a dearer friend than that. That's the best way we can do our thanks to Krishna, our very dearest best friend. So there was something very special about uh, the, the family of Bali Maharaj, Prahlad Maharaj, Hiranyaksha, and Hiranyaka Shikul, um, because there were at least four incarnations of the Lord that appeared to them. Uh, Lord Varaha appeared to kill um, Hiranyaksha. Um, Lord Nirsingha Dev, uh, actually it was Narada Muni that saved Prahlad Maharaj first. He saved Prahlad Maharaj from the demigods. Um, and he's considered the Shakti Avyash avatar in the Bhagavatam of Krishna. And... Um, uh, Lord Nishinga Dev appeared to kill Hiranya Kashipu and, and save Prahlad Maharaj. And then Lord Bhamana Dev appeared um, to uh, teach Bali Maharaj the importance of surrender. And when we think about it, three of the incarnations, Lord Paradev, Lord Bhamana Dev, Lord Nishinga Dev, they appeared exclusively just for this family. Um, that's pretty That's pretty interesting. Um, and Lord Nishinga Dev and Narada Muni alone for Prahlad Maharaj to save him. So... Even though one may consider that this was not a family of what we may say uh, were devotees, but everyone is Krishna's guru. Originally, uh, all these personalities, of course, we know that uh, Prahlad Maharaj was already a Mahabhagavat from birth, but Hirani Kachipur and Hirani Aksha were um, Jaya and Vijaya, the Lord's devotees in Paikunta. And in the same way, each one of us is the Lord's devotees. He's not going to discriminate that I'm not going to appear in this, to, a, to this family because. Uh, their family of demons, because no one is a demon and no one is a friend to him. This is what we've established right at the beginning. Everybody's just his servants. So he showed them a lot of mercy because he gave them many opportunities um, to redeem themselves. He didn't just come and kill Hiranya Kashipur or Hiranya Aksha at the first transgression. They had a chance. It wasn't weakness on the Lord's part that he, in inverted commas, waited for, to kill them. He was giving them opportunities. They were getting good advice. Hiranya Kashipur was being preached to by Prahlad Maharaj and Narada Muni. But only when these these um, demons continued to uh, to uh, cause transgressions against the Lord and his devotees, that was when the Lord came through. Um, before that, he was still there. He was still protecting, the Lord was still protecting Prahlad Maharaj. And Prahlad Maharaj was never suffering through any of Hiranya Kashipur's uh, punishments and, uh, and watches. He was always transcendently situated. So it wasn't that the Lord was waiting and Prahlad was suffering. It wasn't like that at all. Um, he he definitely wanted, obviously, that um, the best outcome would be for everyone. And in the end, when Hirani Kashipur and Hirani Aksha didn't listen, then he definitely came and 
and uh, and punish them. But even when he killed them, he he did something else that was extraordinary. He gave them liberation, and that liberation is um, especially into his apologists is something that's only attained by yogis and uh, and impersonalists after many many years of of um, meditation and studying and spiritual activities. If not, uh, they they don't engage necessarily in devotional service, but they engage in spiritual activities. They're on a spiritual path. But these demons were, were given that opportunity. So Maharaj Yudhishthir, he questions Narada Muni about this in the Srimad Bhagavatam because he was present at the Rajasya sacrifice that he had organized when Krishna killed um, Shishupal. Now we know from the Bhagavatam that Shishupal and Dantavakra, they were two cousins of Krishna. They were the reincarnation of Hiranya Kashipur and Hiranyaksha. So they were also given in the presence of everybody uh, liberation into Krishna's effulgence. The soul merged into that effulgence, not into Krishna, but into the effulgence. So uh, Maharaj Yudhisya was fascinated that, you know, demons that had only been criticizing Krishna and had never said anything good about him ever, what to speak of engaging in devotional service, were given liberation. Um, but um, uh, Krishna, as Narada Muni says, he's the best friend and well wish of everyone. What he saw was only that Hiranya Kashipur, uh, Hiranyaksha, Kamsha, Shishupal, all these demons, that they were remembering him. That's all he remember, He thought. These these um, entities are remembering me. Not that they're my enemies remembering me in enmity and the devotees remembering me in love, but that they're remembering me. For the Lord, he sees that remembrance as equal. He's not, he's completely beyond uh, fr uh, friendship and uh, and um, and and enemies. So that is why, by the result of remembering the Lord so intensely, even in envy, these demons were able to attain liberation from his apologists. So um, Narayan Muni explains this in a very interesting quote. A grass worm confined in a hole, in a hole of a wall by a bee, always thinks of the bee in fear and enmity, and later becomes a bee simply because of such remembrance. Similarly, if the conditioned soul somehow or other think of Krishna, who is Sachidananda Vigraha, they will become free from their sins. Whether thinking of, the, of him as their worshipful lord or an enemy, because of constantly thinking of him, they will regain their spiritual bodies. Unquote. Now, we must also be cautious here and not uh, behave in an inimical way towards the Lord because we think that enmity will get us the same result. Um, Hirani, the demons were not given that opportunity to, to engage with Krishna as their friends. He was as a friend of his. They were given the opportunity to merge into his apologists. Mm -hmm. And no devotee thinks of that as a higher liberation. Um, this was just simply his mercy on them. Um, we must remember that liberation and achieving it in an easier way is not our goal. Our goal is to please Krishna, whether it means that Krishna grants us liberation or not. But pleasing him is the actual aim of devotional service. Our acharyas have, have um, told us to be careful about wanting liberation because that's actually a material desire in a way. Because when we want liberation, it is us wanting something for ourselves. So it's a subtle kind of material desire as well. But when we perform devotional service to Krishna, what is love? It's doing everything for the other person. So devotional service must have the aim of only trying to please Krishna. Also, when we just look at the examples of what happened to Hiranya Kashipur and what happened to Prahlad Maharaj, the choice is easy to think of Krishna more as a friend and as and serve him in devotional service than thinking of him in enmity. The Lord's mercy on uh, delivering those those demons is more just for his glory than for us to think that we can um, try and become his enemy and be liberated. So um, Krishna is also showing um, his uh, supreme uh, magnanimity that he remembered that these demons had been Jaya and Vijaya, the same way he remembers that all of us had been his devotees. And he says for fallen devotees in the Bhagavad Gita, even if one commits the most abominable action, even if he is engaged in devotional service, he is to be considered saintly because he's properly situated in his determination. So everybody in this material world who has fallen, the Lord doesn't forget that we were once his devotees and are still within um, our reality, his eternal uh, servants. And so he's going to give us the opportunity to serve him over and over again. As repeatedly as we try to um, to stay in this material world, he comes repeatedly, whether in his holy name, through the spiritual masters, through his incarnations, through the literature. He's constantly trying to help us come back to him. That is his extraordinary friendship. 
So because, um, you know, he had showed his magnanimity to these demons, he had given them everything. He had given them the sunlight, the moonlight, he said, um, the vegetables they were eating, but he had also given them the opportunity to have these opulences because all the benedictions that gave them opulences were coming from him. They didn't see it that way, but whatever the demigods were giving to them was coming from Krishna. He says in Bhagavad Gita that all the benedictions given by demigods come from him alone. But they simply use those benedictions uh, to their detriment. So Pradal Bharat is praying, don't give me benedictions. He tells the Lord in that prayer, because I don't want to be distracted. So similarly, we have so many wonderful things that Krishna has given us. We mustn't distract them by using them against Krishna. By using everything for Krishna, we're giving, getting ourselves closer to him than away from him. These wonderful facilities that he gives us in this world are for that purpose, to draw us closer to him. Um, even if we make the smallest of efforts in that aim, he's going to reward us. Bali Maharaj says, what a wonderful effect there is in even attempting to offer respectful obeisances to you. I merely endeavored to offer you obeisances, but nonetheless, the attempt was, was as successful as those of your devotees. The causeless mercy you have shown me, a fallen, shown to me, a fallen demon, was never achieved even by the demigods or the leaders of various planets. So what he's pointing out is that because he was bound um, by the by the ropes of um, Varuna, he wasn't even able to offer obeisances. That was the the most he could have done in that situation because he had nothing else. Everything else had been taken away by the Lord. But because he was even trying to just offer obeisances, the Lord um, the Lord not only um, gave him that extraordinary benediction of putting his lotus feet on his head and accepting his surrender and benedicting him. He gave him um, many benedictions uh, that seem material. Of course, Bali Maharaj would use it in the Lord's service so it would be spiritual. But um, even though he took away the universe, he gave him uh, the kingdom of Sutta, which is so opulent, although it's situated within the lower planetary systems that even the demigods aspire for it. Um, he gave Bali Maharaj his own Surashan Chakra for protection and um, he also promised him that in another Manvantar, um, he would be, uh, Bali Maharaj would get the chance to be the king of heaven, Indra. So basically, what he took unlawfully from the Lord, um, that position in the heavenly planets, the Lord was now giving to him uh, in a lawful way because he had surrendered. So that is why it's so important for us um, to, to make that attempt to surrender to the Lord in whatever condition we are. Um, like Bari Maharaj is saying, that the devotees are always bowing down to Krishna. They are getting the benedictions from the Lord by bowing down, but even with a little effort from his part, he got those benedictions. So how much more if we make that sincere effort, even if we are bound by material nature in, in an analogous way to how Bari Maharaj was bound. But if we keep trying to surrender to the Lord, like the Bhagavatam says, no matter how we are suffering, if we make the effort to endeavor to continuously bow down to the Lord, accept the difficulties, uh, render as much service as we can sincerely, we are going to achieve the Lord in a, in a greater outcome than we could ever imagine. So um, Krishna has therefore now quite decisively shown that he is the best friend, even of the demons. He he displayed um, his extraordinary magnanimity on Bali Maharaj by giving him even more than what Bali Maharaj was endeavoring for. And um, therefore, uh, you know, even though Bali Maharaj was cursed by all these Lord uh, Manadas is deserted by his relatives and friends and suffering the pain of being bound and cursed by his spiritual master, he was still fixed on his vow and surrendered. So we have to we have to remember that at all times that um, surrender is something that um, should be the ultimate aim for everything we have. Um, we can we may not have to literally give it all up as Bali Maharaj did, but we give it all up by mentally always remembering at all times, day and night, that everything that we have is Krishna's, and we use it entirely for His service and not for our own pleasure. That is what our real surrender can be. We can dedicate mind, body, words, and everything to serving the Lord and to glorifying Him all the time. And we will achieve that same result of Bali Maharaj. So it's not that Bali Maharaj defied um, his spiritual master um, like his spiritual master was acting for his own good. Bali Maharaj had an idea that, that Bhamana Dev was the Supreme Lord and, and there was some, uh, what you could say, a trick behind him asking for only three steps of land. But he was also understanding that this was going to be a good lesson for him. And so he stood by his word because that was most important. So in the same way, we may have to defy our minds 
um, they may be trying to take us in all different directions, like Maraj's, uh, Bali Maraj's uh, spiritual master was. And we have to remember that the mind is not our friend. We have to strengthen the mind by spiritual intelligence in order to um, make proper utilization of, uh, of everything that we have for Krishna and truly show our surrender. So it's kind of interesting in Vedic astrology that the planet Venus, which is ruling the material comforts, is called Shukra, which is uh, referring actually to Bali Maharaj's spiritual master, Shukracharya, and that uh, Jupiter, which is the planet that's related to spiritual intelligence and spiritual enlightenment and spiritual goals, is known as Brihaspati, and Brihaspati is the guru of the demigods. So we have this complete dichotomy, this, um, this enjoyment of material life as Bali Maharaj was being advised by his spiritual master, and the path of, of uh, renunciation to Krishna, everything that we have being used for him, so even if we're not literally giving it up, we utilize it for him, and that is um, renunciation and surrender. So this brings us to that important point uh, once more, as we always hear, that we need the guidance of a proper spiritual master and proper association. Um, although um, Bali Maharaj was a devotee, but he was in bad association. He was amongst the Dekyas and Adhanavas, and he didn't have a spiritual master who was instructing him in, um, in proper Krishna consciousness. Although Prahlad Maharaj was also in that similar situation, he was amongst demons. He didn't take the association of the demons. He rather gave them association. He was always instructing uh, his schoolmates. He instructed um, uh, uh, Hirani Kashipur, and he was instructing them on the basis of his a proper bona fide spiritual master, Narada Muni, who appeared in the line of the Sattvic succession. So we, we have to emphasize this. Lord Chaitanya had always said that Sada Sangha, Sada Sangha, Sarva Sashtra Kroy, Lama Mantra, Sada Sangha, Sada Sadi Hoi. Association and the, and the guidance of a spiritual master uh, within the line of the Sattvic succession um, will definitely mean that no matter what difficult situation we're in, we can't imagine how difficult the situation Prahlad Maharaj is in, we'll always get the mercy of the Lord. So, to conclude, for anyone who questions the Lord's partiality to his devotees, um, Prahlad Mara, um, Bali Maharaj has a wonderful answer. He says, since your Lordship is indirectly the greatest well-wisher of us demons, you act for our best welfare by posing as if our enemy, because demons like us always aspire for a position of false prestige. By chastising us, you give us the eyes by which to see the right path. So in that way, the Lord is not only delivering demons like Bali Maharaj and others, um, we know by appearing as Lord Manadev. He's appeared as a holy name, like we said, as scripture uh, through the spiritual master, um, and of course, our most extraordinary merciful Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and giving us the opportunities that he gave to Bali Maharaj to surrender to him fully. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu actually gave us something that we could never have imagined. Bali Maharaj had to surrender first before he received the mercy of Lord Manadev. Lord Chaitanya is saying, even if you're not willing to surrender, just take this Maha Mantra. Take my mercy and then surrender later. But take this mercy and take this mantra. And Sri Prabhupada has given us that same uh, mercy. He's carefully taken that message of Lord Chaitanya throughout the world. And it's so essential and important that we all follow in their footsteps and become preachers of this holy name to give everybody that opportunity. And thank you so much for your kind attention. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Are there any questions? Hare Krishna Madhuji, please accept my humble obeisance of Allah Sri Prabhupada. Thank you so much for the wonderful class. Hare Krishna Madhuji, could you just share some light on, on your call? You said you're one of your friends in hospital. Could you just tell us a bit about her, what sort of services she did and you know what you admired about her? Uh, just, thank you, Prabhu. Yeah. Thank you for giving me that opportunity <laughs> and uh, for allowing me to, um, to dedicate my class to her today because it was a little difficult to work around it um, because we were so worried about her. So uh, Kalindi Mataji, like I said, she's a very dear devotee. She actually uh, was born and grew up in Durban. And she's been serving at Trishan Tagora Hari uh, for many years. She joined uh, Krishna Consciousness when she was 14 years old in Kato Ridge. So she is a very senior, very, very, very senior. And she's been serving Trishan Tagora Hari for over 40 years. Um, she's dedicated her life actually to them. And um, she has performed so many incredible services. Um, like uh, Srila Prabhupada and, and the Lord have encouraged us about preaching. She was a, she is a, um, a book distributor and a preacher. And um, she's also been uh, cooking. That is uh, her loving service for Shishin Tagora Hari and to the devotees um, because she does uh, deity, uh, cooking in the deity kitchen, um, dedicated rain, hail, or sun. Uh, she takes the taxi actually to come to the temple and render that service for 
the Lord and she's willing to take any services from anybody who can't do them even at last minute she'll make a plan to do it because she's so concerned that Shishin Tagorahari gets their offerings and she also cooks at the Sunday pre-feasts and for many programs um, she's always there always willing to uh, to give a hand even if she has uh, health challenges um, she sometimes struggles a little bit with her health but her first concern is uh, is doing her service. And many times I had to like hold her back physically when she wasn't feeling well from going up to um, to serve the Lord. And uh, she's got such an extraordinary nature, so loving and so um, welcoming that actually that was the thing that made such a big difference to me when I first went to the kitchen. It was made, I was, you know, although she's so senior, I was made to feel so welcomed by her. And uh, she just took me under her wing. She takes everybody under her, her wing and she teaches you everything patiently. Uh, about the kitchen, where the equipment, how the equipment works, where the spices are, how to make this. She'll just, you know, she's got all the recipes in her head. She's such a fascinating a person to see in the kitchen because she just knows, you know, how to prepare everything so expertly and uh, and everything she does is with so much of love for Shishin Tagorahari. I think the most extraordinary thing was how she made me see them as people because like Prabhupada was, was emphasizing in the purport, we can't have a relationship of love with light with the impersonal form of Krishna um, as the, the impersonalist thing. So that's why they get frustrated because they don't have that opportunity to develop a relationship of love. And if there's no love in a relationship, it doesn't last. Everyone knows that, even from material examples. So if we don't get to love God by learning about his personal aspects, it's go not going to be easy for us to, um, to attain him because love is something that must grow. Even if it's not there in the beginning, it's always within our hearts. It's just that we don't realize it. But that process of devotional service, is un it uncovers that love. And so we have to be at it constantly. So devotees like her, they, they really open your eyes to how the Lord is a person, how uh, the deity is an, is an archa avatar, an incarnation of Krishna, and he's right there. And, you know, that is priceless. It's that kind of, you, you see it in her behavior and you learn from it, but also she says it to you and that makes it so real. And, and that um, has been such an extraordinary inspiration to me and, and so many other people. You know, uh, so humble, so caring, never saying a bad word about anybody, wishing all the best for everybody. It's really a, an extraordinary one of a kind devotee. So, um, like I was saying, she was involved in an accident yesterday and she's got some very severe injuries. So we're just um, praying very hard for her and offering support to her family because she really loves her family and her brothers. And she is uh, always supportive of them and giving them good advice and looking after them. And so um, um, we've also uh, arranged uh, offerings in Mayapur and Darwin. Devotees across the world are praying for her because over her, a long and wonderful career in devotional service. She's touched the heart of many people everywhere. So um, once again, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak about her and for um, getting the opportunity to ask you all to please pray for her. We really appreciate it and it will be a great service to the Lord. Krishamaji, thank you so much. Really appreciate your dedication and time. So sorry to catch, catch you at an awkward moment also, but you, you also sacrificed no, no, and gave class. We really appreciate it. She Thank wants so to, to continue yeah. in our service, especially because preaching was so dear to our heart. Thank you so much. Uh, we, we, Hare Krishna, welcome to Ravindra Prabhu. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu, are you there? Do you have any questions from your side? Hare Krishna Prabhu and uh, Hare Krishna to Mataji. Thank you. Prabhu. Hare Krishna. I, I don't have any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you much for joining us, Prabhuji. Thank we really you. appreciate it. Hare Krishna, welcome to Bhakti and Kuruta Pa. Mataji, thank you so much for supporting our programs. Very appreciate it. Hare Krishna Prabhu, Hare Krishna dear devotees. Um, thank you very much for wonderful class and we are praying for Mataji. Thank we are you. praying. Yes, Hare also, Krishna. also Hare, Hare Krishna to Renee Bodhali. I'm not sure if, Mat if Mataji is there, but Hare Krishna Mataji, thank you so much for joining us. Renee Bodhali. Hare, Hare Krishna. Krishna Prabhu. Thank you so much Hare for joining us, Mataji. Is there any questions or comments from your side? Um, just to say that this was such an amazing class and Amataji delivers the most uh, beautiful classes and we really enjoy them. Oh, thank you so much, Mataji, yeah. for your, your comment. Hare Krishna, Mataji, really appreciate it. Hare Krishna, welcome to Karuna Shakti Dasi. Is that your mother, Mataji? Karuna Sh yeah. Is Mataji there? Is she online? Yeah, she is. Oh, Hare Krishna, Mataji, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate it. Is there any comments or questions from your mm -hmm. side, Madhaji? Karuna Shakti Devi Dasi. 
Okay. Um, yeah, no. <laughs> okay, maybe she can do it. Okay, Malaji, thank you. Malaji, do you mind uh, singing Nishinga Dev Pranam? Do you know Nishinga Dev? Yes. Dev so you can dedicate it to Kalinda, Kalindi Devi Mataji. Thank you so much. Anyway, for the, thank you so much. Hare Krishna, thank you all for joining us. Namaste, 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 Hare 